they added strands of human hair or horse hair. I just said this earlier. Human hair or horse hair, right? So even the people that say, oh, I like my women with natural hair and da 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 da. Look, we've been adding hair to our hair, okay, since before the Europeans. Y'all want to, and it be the ones that claim that they have so much deep knowledge of history and all this other stuff, and they stop at the 1800s. Don't stop at the 1800s. What's going on? I'm Anoki the One, back with another video. And in this video, I'm looking like young M.A. <laughs> this video is all about bear grease, okay? Bear grease. I've been wanting to buy bear grease for years. I finally bought it and I put it on my hair and y'all are gonna see me take my braids out um if you're wondering I never do this my hair the way y'all see my hair is how it is with washing it putting a uh, moisturizer and then curl definer that's it but I just wanted to get the get the bear grease in there I'm going to tell you reasons why you probably want to use bear grease on your hair so if you're an indigenous Aboriginal person, you feel me? Or just period, you know? But uh, I'm going to read a flyer. I'm gonna read some stuff, some 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 history, give y'all some history behind the bear grease. And for the people who feel like they love animals so much, I won't hear nothing about that when y'all be wearing uh, 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 horse hair in your head. Y'all be having human hair in your head. Y'all, if y'all feel like the hair is gonna make y'all hair look good, y'all don't care where it come from, but I'm gonna just tell y'all where it come from, how it come from, okay? And bear grease, the process is, the people who get the bear grease, they're not the people hunting the bears, okay? That's, that's one. They just go to wherever the bears are hunted and, you know, prepared for hide or whatever the case may be. And they ask the people, can you extract some grease for me? And that's how the bear grease is made, okay? Um, and I also feel like we have a very strange uh, relationship with uh, animals because of Disney Channel movies by design, because of propaganda that wants us to, uh, people of color especially, um, wants us to be completely and totally disconnected from um, animals except when they package it up and put it together and sell it back to us right they experiment on animals all the time and then they give us chemicals that are not of nature at all whatsoever and it just jacks us up and then we're like oh no this is terrible but then we didn't watch the Disney Channel movie we didn't watch uh uh, uh we didn't had a teddy bear in our you know growing up that we love so much and now and I'm gonna go to the teddy how the teddy bear got its name I'm gonna just break some stuff down in this video okay but first and foremost I want to read this flyer that talks about the benefits of hair uh using bear grease for your hair that they just you know magically dis they don't know where it came from but you know how that goes um new hair growth whether or not the valuable hair stimulating properties of bear's grease was discovered by the red indians of north america is not now easy to ascertain it's easy it's easy if it wasn't easy you wouldn't even mention it but but Okay. The fact remains that it possesses unusual qualities which make it an old, well-proven remedy for failing hair, I think it says failing, or falling hair, and baldness. It stimulates the hair follicles, produces a lux luxuriant and glossy growth, and is especially helpful in combating dandruff. Bear's grease pomade is delicately perfumed and provides the ideal daily dressing for the hair. It is economical in use and costs only two cents. That tells you how old this this is. Okay, so the 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 the, the folks found the miracle of the bear grease. Okay, and I also read another um, article. This is actually in a book. It's talking about how natives used it for their hair, the Crow Indians and just giving you some context of how they had their hair okay so this is the crow indians crow indians 
are from like Colorado area, Northwestern area. Okay, there's a lot of bears out there. So this makes sense. We don't have as many bears in the South with in the mountains, like in Mississippi. We have bears in Mississippi, but they're not as big. They're not the big bears that they use for this bear grease. So, but they still, they still use it. One of the most, and I'm reading from here, it's all about crow. So hairstyles. One of the most fascinating and distinctive aspects of crow men's costume was their hair. I wonder if they considered what they wore a costume because these goddamn people. Okay, stop. <laughs> What's their hair? They were proud of their long hair, which frequently reached the ground often augmented by locks from others especially women in mourning lowey tells about chief long hair whose hair was said to be over 10 feet long ordinarily it was wound up wound with a strap and folded into a container which was carried by the chief now that makes me think of that one time i saw um one of the marley sons getting ready to play soccer and he had to get a backpack to put his hair in his locks into the backpack okay to play soccer ordinarily it was yeah i read that part uh understandably it was considered the chief's medicine males describes the method used by the crow men to add strands of human hair or horse hair okay this is nothing new honey it ain't European, honey. To their own locks with the aid of fine gum. Okay, who who wears locks that, that it makes sense, that it looks right on their head? Okay, who other what other group of people? Okay. Um Bodmer and others sketched the many styles of hairdressing used by the crow men, variations such as the forelock, the pompadour, top knots, top knots, bangs, braids, loosely hung, loosely hung hair, and many little braids, including one at each side of the front to which crow bows were attached. It is said that they use a heated stick for curling for a curling iron and that they apply bear grease and buffalo dung to stiffen the locks and cactus pith to give it a glossy sheen. They also perf perfume the hair with castorium or sweet grass. Many items were used for further adornment, beaded hair bows, heavy strings of beads or shells. He I ain't shells, beads, who, who else? Okay, who else? And the usual feathers. Crow women wore the hair in two braids or hanging loosely. The hair was tied at night in a body. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, to prevent entanglement. Kerr said in the late 1840s that the women had hair reaching to the shoulders and cut it, cut in bangs in front. They often painted the hair part with red orchard, 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 whatever, however you said that. Really? That's crazy. Who else? Hey, okay, come on, let, let, let's go through it again. Let's go through it again, because I kind of struggled through this because this is a little bitty print that I'm trying to read, okay, for y'all. Okay, but look, <laughs> they added strands of human hair or horse hair. I just said this earlier. Human hair or horse hair, right? So even the people that say, oh, I like my women with natural hair and da 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 da, look, We've been adding hair to our hair, okay, since before the Europeans. Y'all wanna, and it be the ones that claim that they have so much deep knowledge of history and all this other stuff and they stop at the 1800s. Don't stop at the 1800s. That, this is in the 1800s, really. This is in the early 1900s, okay? This is before the propaganda, okay? 
So, pause. Y'all want to talk about um, 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 natural hair when us indigenous people, see, that, that's why it's so important to know where your people came from because they're constantly, even people that look like us is constantly telling us what what is ours and what's not ours and they want us to think that straightening our hair having a stick a heated stick who else got a heated stick with some grease straightening their daggone hair and if and if these natives hair was straight long down all the way to their behind already why would they have to use a heated stick to straighten their hair okay if it's hard to straight naturally okay so and, and painting their hair red come on come on painting their hair red using a heated stick to straighten their hair with with grease now with grease now everybody can't put a lot of grease in their hair they had a lot of grease they had all kinds of stuff to straighten their hair and um when it comes to like the original perm they were the natives had a whole formula for perms before these people dropped over here. It was a mixture of potatoes, eggs, and lye. Okay, but they want to lie to us. Okay, so this is what they do. They create propaganda. They say, oh, you just want to be European. You just want to be like the white man. Da -da 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 -da. For years. And then they shame. This was happening in the early 1900s. They shame us from our actual customs. The, this is this is the stuff that that Madam C.J. Walker knew. Okay, this is the stuff that she was using. Okay, the pomade she was nine times out of ten the pomade that that she was using was bear grease, a mixture of bear grease and some other native things that that worked with our hair, helped it to grow because that's what we've been doing. Okay, and so would they they create this propaganda because even that hair movie with uh chris rock it's a form of propaganda because this was already we were already moving more towards getting away from the chemicals and different things like that but the way it was presented in the movie it went from like shaming people for having their natural hair to shaming people for having straight hair and having weave and different things like that okay so i think they're both wet like we, no shame we should not be ashamed of our hair period okay however we want to put it together okay but i do think that there's a difference between like you know having your hair straightening your hair or whatever because you feel like your hair is not good you don't have good hair okay that's one thing um which i went through that because i had perms from i think preteen until like I was 18. Once I hit 18 and I was making my own decisions, I, I said, I'm done. Benito. I think that I hope that's the right word. Okay. I need to learn some Spanish, but I, I'm done. Okay. Um, I hated, always hated getting my hair done. That's one. Uh, because I was very tender headed, tender headed. I think tender headed is, is cold for abuse. <laughs> okay. Stop. Like that is, no, that's painful. That's some painful stuff. And I hated getting, I hated, I hated is a strong word. I hated getting my hair permed. I really did. I always felt like, and I stopped talking about it because, um, you know, I stopped talking about it because like my family and stuff like that would always make fun of me because I used to be, I used to be in the hair. Mom had her own hair salon since I was six months old. So this is, uh, hair is a passion for me. So when my mom would get to do my hair, my shoes would be kicked off. Okay. Do you hear me? My shoes would be kicked off. I'm yelling. I'm screaming. She got to get everybody out the, the hair salon. They got to evacuate because I had the storm coming. I'm like, look, and really, like now that I think about it, now that I'm older and now that I'm making my own decisions for my hair, I feel like, you know, that was me being true to myself. <laughs> like, even though they make fun of me or whatever, I feel like for real, I was fighting for my hair. 
I was fighting for my hair. I was fighting for like, I look, y'all got to come up with something else. Y'all got to come up with something else. Cause I, this ain't it. This ain't it. This ain't it. I kept saying it. This ain't it. Okay. And then once I became a teenager, got a lot older, then I started to try to contain it. But the second act, 18, yes. I'm out of here. And I still had to recover. And that's a part of the reason why I'm, I'm using bear grease because it's really good for your scalp. My scalp, it, it was traumatized. Like that's the thing. So it's like when they repackage our stuff, right? When they, when they shame us for using our own customs and then they turn around and package it up and say, here, it's not whatever y'all used to call it. It's perm. Even though it's the same ingredients, it's some of the same, they, in perms, they use lye to straighten the hair, but then they have all these chemicals on top of that, this poison on top of that, that destroys your hair. So most quote unquote black people don't even know how good or bad or whatever, how, how their hair texture actually naturally is, right? Like a lot of people, I don't know what kind of hair texture, oh my God, I have no idea. I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Right. And I know for me, when I was younger, my hair was a lot softer than it is now. And now it's more, it feels more brittle and dry and different things like that. So I am uh, actively working to heal my hair, heal my scalp. You know what I'm saying? My crown, you know what I'm saying? And uh, this bear grease is, I will be giving reviews on this hair, uh, bear grease. And I might as well just start taking it out. And I've also been using water and oregano oil. Oregano oil is really good for stimulating your scalp, healing your scalp. So this is just a few drops, maybe like six or seven drops of oregano oil because this stuff is powerful. It burn a hole through your head. Uh, mixed with oil. I mean, mixed with water. And that's that's it. That's all I have. I washed my hair. I combed it, detangled it with the bear grease. And then I put more bear grease in it as I was braiding my hair, which I never do. <laughs> as you can see, it looks like God dang on me. I never braid my hair. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this comes out. I usually don't like the curl pattern that comes out when I braid it and then unbraid it, but we shall see. And also I've had a uh, bad dandruff and both of these are good for dandruff as you just read. But yeah, so no shame. We need to stop shaming each other and ourselves for our hair. Like the women with the, the, the straight hair who get their hair straightened and uh, get weaves and things like that. They call it weave now, but you know, black for black people it's weave and there's shame around it. And for white people it's extensions and there's no shame. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff, but yeah. And also, um, I read an article a while back about how they would like the Europeans would convince the natives to work with them in a battle because of their elite warrior skills. Right. And they would force them to, uh, cut their hair, have a buzz cut, buzz cut like the rest of the people in the military. And when they would cut their hair, they wouldn't be as intuitive as they would be before. Like before they cut their hair, they would be like, they could almost see around corners. Like they're like super in tune with nature, super in tune with their intuition. And when they would cut their hair, they would notice that they would get, they would get got far more easily than they would before. Uh, let's see if y'all can see this. It's glossy now. It's glossy, child. I don't like it. 
looking healthy. But I really don't like the texture. I mean, the uh, not the texture, but I don't like the pattern. How it looks unbraided. But we shall see. I can't really see it like I want to because I'm not in front of a mirror. But I like how it feels. It's very soft. It feels very um, hydrated and nourished. And I had this in for two days. So I've been walking around looking like young MA for two days. Okay, not too bad, but y'all know that I don't normally be. <laughs> That's not my normal hairstyle, okay? But uh, yeah. Okay, I forgot I was supposed to tell y'all the story of Teddy Roosevelt and the teddy bear. Okay, so basically, and I have this feeling from talking to my grandpa because they used to hunt rabbits, deer, squirrels, raccoons, everything. Everything under the sun, everything in the wild, they was hunting. And the animals were different. like. They talk about how um, the squirrels in the wild are different than the little brown squirrels that we see running back and forth. You said it was red squirrels. So they were different. They were bigger. They had a lot more meat. And I'm just like, what? In Mississippi. And so the story of the teddy bear is from a time when Teddy Roosevelt, and this is all propaganda, Teddy Roosevelt supposedly uh was hunting and he saw a, a a a baby bear or some kind of bear and he just couldn't bring himself to kill it and then they started to supposedly make fun of him because you know he had a heart for the daggone bear and then right after that uh they came out with the teddy bear which was propaganda for the children. And uh, they started shipping out teddy bears. And before then, and also, no, before then, these Europeans realized all the different ways that the natives were using bears and they lost their everlasting mind, okay? And they were killing up way too many bears, okay? So yes, they needed to slow their daggone roll um with the killing of the bears because bears was up, up they're about to go extinct because they seen all different ways again the natives with the hair grease and um reversing balding okay and all types of things and people also use bear grease for cooking um they used it for when people would have cuts and bruises and all kinds of different things because in the best time they say to get the bear grease is when the bears are hibernating because that's when their hair is the thickest and the strongest and you embody your hair embodies you know how the bear was when it died if that makes sense and also i i blessed the grease so i think the the, the bear for allowing me to receive this grease Okay, some of y'all that doesn't make sense because y'all have a, a warped um, relationship with animals to where you love them so much that they have no, like it's like by, there is a food chain in nature. Okay, there's a food chain in nature and we are a part of that food chain. And this warped uh, relationship we have with food and, and, and um, animals and animal products right we have all this justification for why we won't do it by design 
but then we'll, we're constantly buying products where people are testing all kinds of chemicals on animals and all kinds of different things and they're packaging the animals and they're killing the animals in inhumane ways they're not respecting the animals life like cows having cows and chickens in, in, in cement blocks and cement uh, concrete jungles dang near their entire life and then you have you're packaging them up for us to eat after they've had a terrible life and they still have that terrible energy okay the chickens chickens are scared already but they really scared and so we're embodying that because you are what you eat but at the same time we talk about oh I love animals no there's nothing wrong with hunting animals the, the native people love animals and Pocahontas to have you thinking oh the Native Americans you know, they loved animals and they, they spoke to the animals and all this other stuff, but they never killed them. Yes! They got guidance from animals and uh, they loved the animals and respected them in nature, but they also respected that they are a part of nature. We are a part of nature. We are a part of the daggone food chain. And so you don't want to kill too much, but you don't want to not kill them. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> You don't want to not hunt them because in that you you become part of the food chain because cows and chickens i mean you become you know prey oh wow this is crazy this looks silky 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 i don't know if you have to see that silky very dark and silky i like it um but then, you know, the only totems, because they believe that the animals were totems, and when you would eat, consume, like they say, the age old thing, you are what you eat. When you consume these totems, you embody whatever animal that you didn't have. So if you only embodying scary chickens, okay, and mad cows, Okay, that probably still got mad cow disease pumping through your food when you're eating it. And they ain't about to stop it from coming through because they're making too much money. And they're all in cahoots with each other. And they're in cahoots with the drug companies to get y'all sick. Okay, so y'all can go to slaughter. So they can have you on prescription drugs for the rest of your life. When all you gotta do is go out there and hunt you some rabbits. If, if you have an infertility problems, rabbits are known for fertility. Nine times out of 10, you need to be eating, if you were to eat some rabbits. My grandpa said they used to be eating up some rabbits and that's probably, nine times out of 10, I wouldn't be a bit surprised as why they used to be having 10 and 15 different kids. But now, the, the thought of rabbits the first thing I thought about was daggone Bug Bunny. You looking at rabbits out there, you thinking of daggone rabbits about to get to talking to you like Bugs Bunny. And they got the same emotions and thoughts and fears and all the worries as Bugs Bunny. Okay, and all your little bunny characters on, uh, you know, on Disney. But at the same time, these people are eating these animals okay these people are out there hunting they trying to convince us not to hunt and be some little wimps <laughs> and i'm talking about myself because i know i'm gonna be a wimp okay but i do want to learn how to hunt because that is a basic skill that you know people need there needs to be hunters out there. You shouldn't be just getting all your food from the market. The market closed down, shut down. You don't know how to survive. You don't know how to skin rabbits or, you know, which ones to eat and when time to eat it and all this, and what time to cook it. We eat chickens and cows year round. Chickens and cows do not belong in nature. They're not even real, okay? They don't belong in nature. You don't see chickens and cows running <laughs> in the forest by themselves that should tell you something they're not natural okay and even for you vegans if you eat nothing but food fruit and vegetables from the market 
okay? And the food you eating, the fruit you eating ain't got no seeds. You eating 100% GMO. You're, eat, you're eating 100% fake food, okay? So, not bad. Not bad, this actually came out really well. And my hair, I don't really have any, I have bad dandruff. I don't have any dandruff right now. And they say this cures dandruff. Both of these, both of these separately cures dandruff, so together. Well, yeah, I like that, you know, I like it. I like to do that more often, okay, okay. Nice. Okay, so y'all see the end product? The end product of this experiment. I will be using uh, bear grease from now on for the rest of my life. This is great. And my hair is dropping down longer than it normally does. That's another thing I wanted to stretch it out some. Because it is a lot longer then it'd be looking on with my when I have my hair. When I do my little wash and go, it do be longer. And if I want to have a ponytail that's not straight up in the air, it need to lay down, son. It need to calm down, son. You know what I'm saying? It need to chill. It need to chill a bit. Need to chill a bit. Need to calm down. My hair be. My hair be wow, wow, wow. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. All right, I'll see y'all on the next video. Like, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you want to hear more. Uh, have more videos about like day-to-day -day customs and different things that I'm starting to adopt to 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 take better care of myself and become more self-aware of my indigenous people. I might even try to put together some 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 indigenous perm. I'm scared I'm gonna try it. I might go to the Chinese store <laughs> and get some uh, fake hair, curly hair to try it out on before I put it on my head. My, you know, I don't know how that's gonna work, but I feel like somebody, one of us, we need to figure this out. Okay, so we can have natural, uh, ingredients because no matter how we have our hair it's, it's natural okay but we need the, the the difference is we need to be using natural ingredients in our hair okay I like it all right I'll see y'all in the next video comment let me know